Wednesday, January 3rd, 5 p.m. New York time. U.S. stock market is closed and the futures markets are closed. It's the middle of the week. It's been a short trading week because Monday was a holiday. Still, we are in the middle of the week. Let's include the weekly review. Look at the broad markets. Start off with the equity indexes, then the yields, the currencies, the commodities. We'll look at the five-year charts. And each candle will be a week. So the current candle is already halfway done. We'll be able to identify if we took out the high or low of last week, as well as comparison from the high and low of last year to how to start your trading here. We get the cash index, S&P 500 first. It's currently red for the week. Lower high, lower low than the prior week, which was the high of the year. NASDAQ 100, same thing. It reversed. No surprise. Look at that dodgy candle up there. The Dow Jones... 30, actually made a new high, all-time high, new high. So it took out that high of last year, which was here. So now we can remove that. Outstanding. Higher high, higher low. Go here for the past five years. The Dow transports, red, lower, low, lower high. Dow utilities, green, higher, high, higher, low. Remember the utilities, high dividend paying stocks, defensive stocks, people that want fixed income, gravitate towards these equities. And the Russell 2000, red, lower, low, lower, high. So there you have it. Very diversified stock index, all time new high in the Dow 30. And Utility stocks, green for the week. Again, the Dow 30 also has utility stocks in there. So that was the Dow 30 index. I mean, sorry, that was the stock indexes. Let's go look at the yields. You have a lot of nonsense being spoken last year, the year before, and currently this week from talking heads in the media with their opinions, not facts, saying, again, Last year, the beginning of last year, 2023, as well as the end of December 2022 in December, those talking heads were saying interest rates would be reduced last year. Two basis points, three basis points, one basis point. Never happened. They were wrong. They didn't own up as well. Many of them said the stock market was going to crash. It never happened. We made new highs, record new highs. And they said... Inflation was here. Inflation's coming. They were wrong. Neither occurred. The 30-year yield, red, lower, low, lower, high. The 10-year yield, lower, low, lower, high. The 5-year yield, lower, low, lower, high. And the Two-year yield, low, low, lower, high. So looking here at the top two, let's do the top two. There we go. Fix this chart so you can see something in the comparison. Oops. This is the 30-year. This is the 10-year. Look at them both. So majority of mortgages that are financed, home mortgages, of course, are between the 30-year and the 10-year. So both are not different the way they're trending. These are yields, lower yields, typically reflect lower interest rates. That should weaken the U.S. dollar. But again, U.S. dollar is also, also a safe haven currency. U.S. dollar gets stronger that often has a bearish bias in the equity market. There's correlations here. Again, U.S. dollar also priced in commodities. 
And you see that again, the yields are lower. Look at the US dollar index. US dollar index green for the week, higher, high, higher, low. Also from here to there, it's a Fibonacci. And look at that. Currently doing a retracement above the 50%. So you see the blue lines. Trend is overall down, but it's in a retracement. It hasn't got all the way to 0.618. But if it goes to the 0.618, it typically means that on a retracement down, it shouldn't break out that low. So if we're going to have a dollar build acceleration up here, or not take out that low, but trend back higher, that's contrary to uh, what you would think would happen since if, if interest rates go lower, you expect the dollar to be weaker, commodities be higher. Time will tell. Let's go look at the major currencies now. We use the currencies in the futures market. The euro for the week, red, lower, low, lower, high. Look at that bearish pin bar as expected. Reversal. Japanese yen, same thing, red, lower, low, lower, high. British pound, again, red, lower, low, lower, high. Australian dollar, red, lower, low, lower, high. Canadian dollar, red, lower, low, lower, high. Correlation. Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, those two nations are heavily weighted based on commodities. From the metals to the energy. So the metals and energy commodities, when they're going higher, you typically see the currencies going higher. So I just showed you them. They're going down for the week. We'll get to the metal shortly. Swiss franc, inside candle for the week. Safe haven currency, mark up in a consolidation. Is this consolidation going to be distribution or accumulation? Time would tell. Mexican peso, red for the week. Tight consolidation. See all this huge consolidation. Let's extend this out. There we go. Japanese won. Sorry, Chinese won. I apologize. Chinese won. Green for the week. Higher, high, higher, low. Huge consolidation building here. Is this consolidation distribution or accumulation? Well, we know this was a markdown and time would tell. And crypto Bitcoin. Higher, high, higher, low. Red for the week, but higher, high, higher, low. Took out the high of last year. Outstanding. Let's remove this. Huge trading range, but big rejection. Big week on the top, big week on the bottom, small body on top of a trend. Again, the candle's not done for the weekly yet. It's very suspicious up here. There's a lot of policies going on right now. The regulatory body, the SEC, to approve a stock ETF of Bitcoin. Or a time out, time will tell. So those were the currencies. Let's go look at the commodities now. Already saw again. Commodity countries, their currencies are weak. Look at crude oil. Green, made a lower, lower, lower high, and buyers stepped in defending it. Let's look at this again. Past five years, huge consolidation phase up here. Some whipsaw, but also consolidation. Down here, consolidation. I'm thinking this is accumulation here. Natural gas, green for the week, higher, high, higher, low. And I've been sharing this trade out there consistently with my patrons using the stock ETF, UNG, selling puts, which is a bullish strategy that this is under accumulation. Next, commodities, metals. Gold, red for the week, lower high, lower low. Makes sense, dollar stronger. 
Silver, big red candle already. Oof, big sell off. Lower high, lower low. Platinum, inside candle for the week. And copper, red, lower low, lower high. Copper, big use for industrial use. So if the interest rates were to go lower, you expect that would help the housing market and the demand for copper, time will tell. But often copper is a early leading indicator of a growing economy. Not necessarily every nation, So that was commodities. Uh, agricultural and grains. So let's go to the, yep, that was the metal. So let's go to the agricultural and grains. Focus. Corn futures, red for the week, lower, low, lower, high. Huge consolidation occurring here. Rice, new high. Yep. Higher high, higher low. And forming a bearish pin bar. Interesting. Wheat futures, red, lower, low, lower, high, in its consolidation. Soy oil futures, yep. green, but new low as well, too. Took out that low. Staircase pattern, lower, low, look at this. Soybean mill futures, red, lower, low. And soybean futures, low. A lot of that has to do with a strong dollar. And we're finished this off by the livestock. Live cattle futures, green, higher, high, higher, low for the week. Very close to that retesting, the swing point and midpoint. Feeder cattle, green, higher, high, higher, low. Lean hog, took out the low of last year. Interesting. Yep. Huge rejection. I'll show you this again. This big candle was a rejection. Impulse move down, consolidation, and lower low. Hog is getting cheaper. So let's remove that because it took out the low of last year. That was a brief overview. Thank you as always for spending just a little bit of your time with me. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.